your dad was a footballer. Is that a mm -hmm. fact? That is a Absolutely. fact. Manchester United came down when he was uh, like 15 from Glasgow and played yeah. for Blackburn Rovers, went in the war, came out, played briefly for Bolton and Blackburn, then United signed him in 1950. We moved to Manchester. And then so I grew up knowing every, all the players. I was still close to everybody because when he finished, he... He carried on as a scout for the club and as a sort of, he ran the, he did the announcements at halftime, put the records on, whatever, in those days, and like in the he late, the the early 60s. He's and he loved, no, he, well, kind of, because, you know, though, they had a PA system, you know, play yeah. a few records, you yeah. know, Manchester United, reggae, whatever, and it was, I mean, they still play it now. Because I was back there about, when was I back there? About six weeks ago, I saw a game there. Yeah, it's about to say, how often do you go and... I try and go, well, my mom's still alive. She lives about 10 minutes from the ground still, so I see her all the time. Mm -hmm. I go back and visit her, and then I'm lucky enough to catch a game. Because Alex Ferguson's one of my oldest friends, so... Okay. That's you know, it. But i got to say, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all these great, but, I, uh, you know, this year, I'm Manchester City, and they do play some beautiful football. you got to give it up, and, mm -hmm. you know... I don't want them to win the quadruple, no. <laughs> we won the treble. We can't have them winning the quadruple. Give us a break, would you, Pepe? You should have come to us anyway in the first place. Who is your favorite player, just period, that you have you remember either growing up watching or you've enjoyed uh, watching? I saw film and seen players. I mean, I go back to, you know, Di Stefano could probably be compared to any, any player, the great mm -hmm. Argentinian sort of wandering Real Madrid when Real Madrid started that, you know, the Galacticos, if you like, in the 50s when they collected a lot of the Hungarian... I think the Hungarian side, which has revolutionised soccer for me when I sat with my dad and watched them beat England at Wembley 6-3 in 1953, Pushkas, Hidaguti, Botzik, you can name the Grosic. Mm -hmm. They were a phenomenal side. Then they had the revolution and the Real Madrid plucked, if you like, like Pushkas, and that started. Di Stefano from Argentina, and then they played... And I saw them play at United, Real Madrid. You imagine in the 50s in England, there's Rab Knight, and all these guys ran out in all white with tans, and everybody went, oh, jeez, you know, wow. And they played as good as they looked. Mm -hmm. So I've always had a sneaking sort of liking for Real Madrid in a way, even though it's, you know, it's a completely falsely run organization like most <laughs> are in sport. Most are in sport because there's so much money, but we both know that. But they keep up this, you know, it's fascinating. I love the European Cup. We got Barcelona next. This week, which is tough. Right. It's tough. The European competition is tough. Well, I mean, there's a Champions League game against Barcelona yeah. coming up in just a couple That's of days. That's what I meant. Yeah, right. I yeah. mean, no, I went to the last final with Barcelona, which is a kind of a cruel lesson. We, we looked great for 10 minutes and never saw the ball again, you know, for the entire game. Sure. But you've got to be, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, but I grew up with the game, so I know about sports and that level of it, which is, it's a cruel thing. Ian McShane here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, and we'll get to uh, Hellboy, John Wick, Deadwood, and the rest of your uh, filmography in a second. Do, any American sports teams that you're you're partial to at all? Yeah, I've, I I really have a always a sneaking love for the the Raiders. When I first came over in '75, the first team I said play uh, the Oakland Raiders. Then they came here. I used to go and see a couple of games here, but the atmosphere was very dodgy here in in the in Los Angeles. Yeah, uh -huh. in, in the '80s, it all got confused with sort of, you know, identities and game. It became a sort of a mm -hmm. going down. It was interesting. We fights at games right. or whatever, which you know, it's well, a big family. They didn't want that. You have know? you ever been to the Black Hole up in Oakland? But, Did you ever go to a game No, I never got Oakland? to Oakland. No, okay. but I mean, I saw them then. But that, the, but watching that team, I mean, Stabler was like a wonderful player to watch if you wanted to know about how to throw a football. Right. You know, I mean, Kenny, Kenny the Snake, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, there he is up there. And Beletnikov the run those great routes. Lester Hayes was all stick him at the back, and then you had that <laughs> amazing defense. You know, and he was like a mixture of all those players that nobody wanted. Also run by a guy who was the most interesting guy in the, in the NFL. I was about to say, he Al went, Well, because he didn't seem to fit amongst all these, you know, super corporate people. And he was a coach. Dal Davis was one of those people, which reinvented the game, if you like, and the way it was level played. Also, you know, Rich, you could explain that yes. dirty word socialism to America if you wanted by saying that's what the NFL is based on. <laughs> if you want to look at the politics, very successful because <laughs> you, you put in, you take out. And that's right. what it is. But it's like on a, on a higher level. But it's like it's a, it's a great game, but it's got dissipated over the years. I don't know. So much, you know, when they change the rules, it's used it to make it protect the quarterback because now, mm -hmm. you know, the athletes are so expensive. They're going to be, they're like thoroughbred horses, you know, taken away, whatever. That's why I think the calls have become so weedy 
in basketball, games like that, which I used to love. My favorite basketball team was the Pistons, the 88 team, the Pistons. No pro- oh, one I, I love that. My favorite the moment bad was. Boys. The bad when they walked up, I thought it was great when she Jordan and that love, and they went and they went, ah, screw you. And they walked, <laughs> what, a two minutes to play, they walked up. I thought I was, yes, that's my kind of thing. <laughs> they thought, no, no. It's like everybody it. thought, you know, when Robert Duran, Roberto Duran fought Sugar Ray, and Sugar Ray fought the last 10 seconds of each round, remember? The, and, the, and it was like, Duran was like, it wasn't like, no more. He went, no, nah, I can't, no more. I can't stand. Going to fight me? Okay. No. I love this. How I love it. How good is this? By the way, just to be talking to the guy who played Al Swearingen with uh, talk Al Davis with him. This is fantastic. And you love the bad boys, too. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.